joint control. Is that right? Journals. Okay. All right, so today, so far we've dealt with starting in second year and then what we started with in this year. We've dealt with the parent has full control of a subsidiary and how we account for that we consolidate isn't it and when we consolidate we bring in a hundred percent of all the line items and then we take off an NCI or we create this NCI yeah? then last week we looked at the case where we have significant influence and significant influence is somewhere between 20 and 50, more than 20, less than 50 percent. And when we have significant influence, we have an associate, sorry, we have an associate, and associates, we talked about that, what we do with associates is we equity account. So when we equity account, it's one line in each of our standards, isn't it, or each of our statements. One line in financial position, one line in PL, one line in OCI, isn't it? And then in equity, in statements of changes in equity, we end up with our percentage share of the changes in reserves. That's what lands up in statement of changes in equity, isn't it? Now today we're going to look at a third level of control today. We're going to look at when we have joint control. And joint control is when we have a what they call joint arrangement. A joint arrangement. And so we're going to first start off by looking at this definition of joint control and then looking at these joint arrangements because there are two types sorry, of joint arrangements. So, first of all, what is joint control? And there are a couple of very important things before you establish that you have joint control. The most important of them is that there needs to be an agreement. It can't be that it appears that there's joint control. It can't be that we each own 50%. That's not joint control either. Joint control is where there's an agreement, an arrangement. Yeah? It's a contract, a contract actually, a contractual agreement between two parties. And that agreement mean, gives those parties joint control. We can have joint control and have one person owning 10% and the other one 90. But they have an agreement, a contractual agreement between them that they will share control. Yeah? And joint control can only exist and only exists when, and I mean that joint agreement already gives you a very good idea whether there isn't or not, unanimous consent. No, I can't spell unanimous. Oh no, because I've already got the NEN. A unanimous consent. So it, what does this joint control mean? It means that there needs to be unanimous consent. It means that there are no decisions that are made unilaterally by one party. 
no unilateral decisions. The one party cannot make a decision without the other. They can only make decisions if both agree. If one doesn't agree, it doesn't get done. Right? That's joint control. So when we have joint control, we land up with looking at two different accountings. And I spoke to you about those, I think, last week, isn't it? Because we could have joint control over an entity where our joint control is over um, the net assets, joint control over the net assets of the entity. And in that case, we call it a joint venture. Yeah. So if my joint control is over a company, an established company, we agree that I'm going to own a certain share, number of shares in the company and you will. It's a separate company. It has its own bank account, its own legal entity, and my joint control is in the net assets of that company and your joint control is over the net assets of that company. In that case, it's a joint venture. There are a couple of things we look at when we're trying to decide if it's a joint arrangement or a joint venture. Looking at whether it's an entity is just one of them, but it is the biggest one. We also would look at things like, do they have their own bank accounts? Do they run their own uh, set of books, isn't it? Because we also have joint control sometimes over um, operations. And an example of that would be when an airline gets together with a car rental company and with a hotel to put together package weekends, isn't it? When the three of them get together and form this joint arrangement to do these package weekends, each one is giving something and taking something, isn't it? The percentages would be different because flights uh, is a different amount of revenue to car hire is a different amount to hotels yeah and there's no separate company established that does its own revenue and what will happen is actually somebody will book the thing and money will flow to one and then that person will subdivide the money and flow it out isn't it or incur the expenses expenses are incurred by the different entities so in that case we have a joint operation where we have a joint operation we have joint control where we have individual joint rights to assets. So let's just say, assume that to run this operation, we set up a, an office, a travel office. We have joint rights to that, those assets in that travel office. We have joint rights or joint obligations for liabilities. Uh, the salaries of those people that are employed, we have a joint obligation to pay. Yeah. And so when we have joint uh, controls of individual assets or joint obligations for individual liabilities, then in that case, we have a joint operation. It's called a joint operation. In the question, what you could get in an exam is a story where you have to decide if there's joint control first of all and then you might have to decide whether it's a joint venture or a joint operation yeah it would be small five marks seven marks something like that i've never seen it at third year level but it could come up when it comes to actually preparing financials or doing journals what happens in third year is they will tell you if it's a joint venture or a joint op because they don't want you to get it wrong because then you get zero. You get zero because you made one mistake, which was deciding that it was the wrong thing. Yeah? So they will tell you, and you remember in the assignment we had those three companies, and they said to you, this is a joint arrangement and it's a joint venture. It's classified as a joint venture. This is a joint arrangement and it's classified as a joint op. So they will tell you if it's a joint venture or a joint op. But these are the steps when we have joint control is to first establish number one is there in fact joint control or not 
Because if I have 20% and there's no joint control, then I have maybe got significant influence, isn't it? If I earn 60% and there's no joint control, then maybe I have control, actually. I'd have to go and look. Yeah. Uh, so first, I have to establish if there's joint control, and it's very important there has to be an agreement. If we have 50-50 share, but there's no agreement, I've got to look at other things that are telling me which one of us actually has control, isn't it? Like, if you look at a couple... They maybe say they have joint control, they're married, but when you look at the decisions that are being made, some decisions are being made solely by the one party and some are being made solely by the other, isn't it? And there isn't always unanimous consent. So in that case, there isn't joint control really. All right, so that's the first step, is to decide if you really do have joint control. And then this is the second step, is to decide which one have I got then? Have I got a joint venture or a joint op? Joint ventures are accounted for using the equity method. And in my last week, when we were doing associates and we did the equity method, we started to do the assignment question which had a joint venture. Yes? Why? Because it is exactly the same as an associate. It's just the name that changes. So instead of saying investment in associate, we say investment in joint venture. Instead of saying share of profit of associate, we say share of profit of joint venture. It's just the name that changes. Otherwise, everything else stays the same. So joint ventures are equity accounted. Joint operations, I like to use this word, but I think it's not quite the word in the statement, is an interesting one because what we do with joint operations is that we proportionately consolidate. Okay, so let's look at what this means. Do you remember I said to you that one of the key definitions of a joint operation is that we don't have joint control over the net assets of the entity because there isn't really an entity. What there are are assets that each joint venturer owns, liabilities that each joint venturer has, and then there are assets and liabilities that, as a joint operation, they all have. Yeah? And each venturer has an obligation and a right for those. So what happens is when we account for a joint operation, that's what we account for. We account for, let's assume they buy a building, and there are three partners and they each own a third, we will account for a third of the building in each one. It's a bit crazy, but that is what we do. If they sign a mortgage bond and they all co-sign, we count for a third of the mortgage bond in each one. So a joint operation is proportionally consolidated. Yeah, proportional consolidate, consolidation, I think is what I really should have said here. Yeah? Proportional consolidation. So what do I do? I bring in my share. The share is not a third, a third, a third usually. It's different percentages because different people bring different things to the party, isn't it? So you could have a, a silent partner who put in all the money and, uh, and so therefore wants a bigger share of the percentage. But the other partner who puts in the work gets a smaller share because he didn't put in any money but actually does all the work so he has equal say. Yeah? So... We proportionally consolidate the percentage owned and um, the percentage of the share of the assets, the liabilities, the profit and the loss. Yeah. So we're going to start off by doing that proportionate consolidation and we're going to do it for the assignment question. Why not, isn't it? So if you look at the assignment question. So essentially, if, if I was to do a, an example of um, a consolidation for you, uh, we are not going to add the joint venturers numbers in. We will journalize them in, right? So the first journal entry that you will do for the joint op is a journal, is a journal entry where you're going to take the trial balance of that joint op and you're going to bring in every single asset and liability at our percentage only. Yeah? So the first journal entry is entire TB at your end percentage only. Then the second journal entry that you will do is an elimination entry. 
Yeah, do you agree that I would need to do an elimination entry? Because then I land up still having my investment in joint op sitting in the parent, and then I land up with share capital, etc., isn't it? Then I will do an elimination entry. When I do my elimination entry, I may land up with goodwill. I never, ever, 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 ever land up with NCI. Because I've only brought in my percentage, so there is no NCI. Yeah? My second journal entry is my elimination entry. And then the third journal entries that I will do, remember now, if you consolidate, I bring in 100%, isn't it? I add the entire TB. Then I do the ONAC. Then the journal entries that I do after that is to give NCI their share of profits, isn't it? I don't need to do this here because I've only brought in my percentage, isn't it? So what's there is all mine. So the only thing that's left to do is intercompany. And intercompany is exactly the same as subsidiaries because I've brought in the entire trial balance, isn't it? Except percentage only. No NCI impact because there's no NCI. You know, even in groups, we used to have to say, who has the profit when I'm working out the share of NCI? Must I adjust for that unearned profit in inventory or not, isn't it? We don't have to do that with joint ops. It's such a pleasure, isn't it? I'm only bringing in my percentage. There's no NCI. I don't have to worry about giving him a share of anything. Whatever uh, intercompany transactions I have, I eliminate, but I only eliminate my piece. And so I don't have to worry about any NCI. So if there was a dividend, for example, paid by the joint op to the company or a distribution of some kind, I would just eliminate my piece because in my income, that's what's sitting there. When I bring in theirs, I only bring in their percentage and they eliminate easily, isn't it? So what we're going to do is we're going to try and do these journals and instead of doing them with an example, we're going to try and do them with the assignment. I don't think the assignment asks for journals. If I'm not mistaken, I don't think so. They just ask for a P&L. But we're going to do the journals. They can be your workings, isn't it? Part, you can submit them as part of your workings or not. It's up to you to practice them. Yeah? And then what will happen is that we will then have numbers so when we are preparing the PL, we can go and put in the numbers according to our journals. All right. So, um, sorry, that was an example that was there. If we have time, we can come back and have a look at the example. So this was our assignment that we started last week. And we had looked at the subsidiary way back in lecture one, isn't it? But we hadn't looked at it since. So we might need to go and still do NCI's share of profit for that subsidiary. I don't know if there are any intercompanies with a subsidiary. I never even looked at that. But I don't think so. I think the intercompanies were with the joint arrangements. And last week we looked at, I think, Tendu. Hey, Tendu was the, the one that was the joint uh, venture. So when we look at the additional information, we had looked at one. We acquired shares in Tendu. Since this date, they exercise joint control in terms of an, an agreement. So we have joint control, we have the agreement. The arrangement is classified as a joint arrangement, um, as a joint venture, sorry, in IFRS 11, and etc., etc. And then there's the stuff for Tendu. And then they say to you, on the 1st of January, we bought 20,000 shares in Sangha. So this is what we're going to look at today, Sangha. On the 1st of January, we acquired 20,000 of the issued shares of Sanger for 550,000 rand in terms of a contractual agreement. They exercise joint control, and the arrangement is a joint operation. The arrangement specifies that all revenues, expenses, assets, and liabilities are al allocated according to the percentage interest held by the operators. They can, of course, in the agreement, specify different percentages eh? for assets, different percentages for profits. It just causes chaos then with your journals, isn't it? But for your purposes, it's usually the same percentage and things are straight. Um, at acquisition date, the fair value of assets and liabilities were considered to be equal to carrying amounts. Obviously, just like control, we can have adjustments. We had adjustments in associates too, isn't it? All right. So the first step, however, before... So that one will be one that we need to consider. 
Then, this was for Rabo for the subsidiary. This is so that we can do NCI's share of profit, do you agree? Because they give us a little PL for the subsidiary. Then, um, there's nothing here to do with Sanger, and we did deal with this 10 do piece last time, isn't it? The mark to market. Um, the Marlin shares are just an investment. Here, here's some stuff with Sanger. AB provided accounting services to Tendu and Sanger. So there was a monthly um, accounting fees. We ignored these with Tendu, hey, because for associates, we don't worry about these presentation and disclosure because we don't bring in all the line items. But now we do bring in all the line items, so we need to do intercompany transaction there. And then we also have loans, so we need to adjust those, which we also didn't do in Tendu. But remember, we're going to adjust our percentage only. Then, we dealt with number 10 last week, which was the profit from Tendu to AB, but 11 is inventory sales. Since the 1st of January, 15. I'm imagining that that's last year, hey? Our year end is 16. December 15. Okay. Since 1 January 15, Sanger sold inventories to AB at a markup of 20%. Total sales for the year was 670. They had a 75% of the total inventory during the year. They had sold 75%. So it means the other 25 is still on hand. Yeah. So that one we will need to do. Um, let's see what else there is. They measure NCI using proportionate net asset value. What a, what a, what a. Okay. So the three steps that I wanted you to do for the journals is I wanted you to first journalize the trial balance, yeah? So this is the trial balance over here. There's Sanger. What you're going to do is you're going to journalize this trial balance. And I know it's like a pain, but that is the way, if they ask you to do the journals, and I've seen a question for 25 marks, do the journals for the joint op. And that first journal is just like marks for jam, isn't it? So you're going to say debit PPE 1250 times your percentage share. And you're going to do that for every single item on this trial balance, whether it's debits or credits. You'll see some of them are credits, then you're going to, going to be on the credit side. And then you're going to check if your journal balances, because they must balance to null. Yeah? So that's journal one. You're going to journalize the trial balance. At end of year, your share, every single item on this trial balance. And it must balance to zero. It's journal one. Then journal two is the ONAC elimination. You're going to eliminate the share capital, the retained earnings, any other reserves on acquisition. You're going to eliminate my investment, the 550, and the investment didn't change because there was no mark to market on that investment. So look, it's still here at 550. Yeah, we eliminate this investment at 550. I can't have an investment in myself. I'm going to bring in my share of the assets and liabilities. I eliminate the investment and I bring in any goodwill if there is goodwill. There's no other adjustments to assets, so I'm sorted. That's the second journal. Then you're going to do the third set of journals, which is going to be the intercompany journals. Intercompany journals, there will be a couple, three, the accounting fees, the loans, and the intercompany inventories. Remember, your percentage only. Yeah? All right. Let's see how that goes. Proportionate consolidation. Easier than a consolidation, isn't it? But very similar. Because you're used to doing consolidations now. You've been doing them for a year. So, and there's no NCI. So what could be better? All right. So journal one, trial balance of Sanger. All the debits and credits. Obviously, you have to go and see what percentage we have. Every single line item, debits, credits, you balance to zero. Okay. Second journal on X. I don't want to confuse you about what workings need to be done for this particular question we're doing. For this particular question we're doing, we were only asked for PL. We wouldn't worry about the ONAC unless the ONAC was a bargain. So you still would need to check it, isn't it, if in case it was a bargain. But if it wasn't a bargain, we wouldn't worry about it. Or unless there was any goodwill impairment. But I didn't see anything about goodwill impairment. Um, but remember always to be in mind what your outcome is, what you're working towards. It's 
it's always uh, I know for me I always forget the the 40 then you do the whole calc especially when you get lost like in an unknown profit on inventory calc you get so lost in that unknown profit then you forget to do the 40 isn't it so you remember that you can do the 40 at any stage so when you you can do it straight away and then do all your calcs the way that you would have normally done them just so that you don't forget the 40 but I'm going to show you how you can see the numbers flowing um, well not always but you can sort of see the numbers backing out because you've only brought in 40 so you can only remove 40 isn't it so if you bring in 40 and then try to remove 100 percent it won't balance isn't it you're going to get funny numbers done okay let's just wait a bit for the other two to be done what's that my goodwill sorry it's like is it a rand out Seven. Seven, three, four, seven. Seven, three, four, not seven, four, three. Yeah, seven, three, four. Is it? Seven, four, three. Uh, let me go back and check. I also do, do, do that. You wrote it the wrong way. Let's see. So I cheated. I didn't write out that journal. But, you know, in an exam, if they ask you for the journals, in a subsidiary, that's not my first journal because what I do with subsidiaries, I just add them all in, isn't it? Uh, but with a, a joint op, this is my first journal to bring in the trial balance at your end, at your percentage. And sometimes what they do, what you see them do, I'll show you in, a, in an example once we've done the assignment, is they combine the first and second journal into one. But I find it easier to do one, make sure it balances, then back out two and you can see what's backing out, isn't it? Because what you should see with journal one and two is that because it was done at beginning of year, what you should see eliminating is that in journal one, you're bringing in this 20 and this 495743. Yeah? And of course, in, in the parent, we've got this 550. And then in journal two, those three disappear. Yeah? So what we brought in disappears. If you made a mistake, it won't match isn't it then so journal one exactly those numbers at 40 percent you should balance to nil if you don't it's because you've left something out some reason students think they mustn't put in equity because we're only bringing in assets and liabilities no we bring in equity our ONAC elimination will eliminate the ONAC and equity and the SINSAC we've only brought our share in it is ours isn't it so any movements if this was two years ago and we had much bigger retained earnings now any difference then is our retained earnings it must stay do you agree um, so that's the first journal. Here yeah, was the second one then where we eliminated the 20, the 457, and the 550. We were left with goodwill. Yeah. We needed to do that just to check that we didn't have bargain. Because if it was a bargain, it was bought in the current year, it would land up in our PL, isn't it? Other income. But no, there was no bargain. It was goodwill. And I think later on they say something about no impairment of goodwill. I'm not sure. Usually they say in the questions, you must. Um, double check for it because usually when we get to the end we're just going scan 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 um, what do they say they measure investments at fair value through OCI they measure NCI at proportionate net asset value you may assume SA normal tax is 28 and capital gains is 66.6 each share cap carries one vote the profits were earned evenly nothing about impairments nothing about impairments so assume no impairment I guess What do they put? Oh, also a statement of changes in equity. Okay. So you all happy with journal one and journal two? Yeah? Journal one and journal two. Then all intercompanies that we were doing groups we do in joint ops. So our first one is the accounting services, 2,000 rand a month for 12, for 12 months, 40% only, 9,600. They say it's included in other income and in other expenses. And there was nothing outstanding, so there's nothing in payables and receivables. So we're going to reverse, isn't it? So debits, other income, credit, other expenses to reverse it. So we must remember when we do our P&L to go and do that. Then they say there was a loan made by AB to Tengu. 
and they'd be interested 8%. We're going to eliminate the loan. The loan was 50. We eliminate 40. No, the loan was 55. 55. We eliminate 40%, which is 22. What you'll see is that when I um, credit this loan, sorry, when I debit this loan from AB, why did you do that? When I debit this loan from AB, it will match what I brought in because everything that I'm eliminating must be something I brought in because I, there's no other way for it to land up there. I brought in a credit, which was a loan to AB, of 22. Here it is, isn't it? So I brought in a credit in my first entry. Now in this intercompany entry, I'm going to do a debit. So this loan will disappear, which it has to, right? Then you'll see that what will be left over here, when we look at loan to Sanger, it was 55. I'm only going to eliminate 22, which is going to leave the other 33. Yeah? And the reason that I leave it there is because I... When I do a joint, a proportionate consolidation, let me show you in a picture what that looks like if I had to draw it. Here's the parent. Here's the joint op. Okay? But I don't own all of the joint op. There are other parties who own 60%. I only own 40. My group looks like this. Yeah? My group with the joint op. Okay, it's a bit squiff but I only include my 40. I don't include the 60. I was hoping to make it 60, 40, and I've made it the other way. Okay, I don't include the 60. So when I give a loan to the joint op, 40% of the loan is between us. I eliminate. The other 60% of the loan is considered to be a loan to the other parties, and that one stays in. Yeah? So the other 60% of the loan stays in my books, because it's considered to be a loan from me to the other joint venture parties. Because why? They have co-obligations for all the liabilities. So they have an obligation for 60% of that liability to make sure it gets paid back to me. Do you agree? I have an obligation for the 40. So if the loan doesn't get paid back, then 40% I can write off. But the other 60, they have an obligation. So I can go back to them and say, hang on. Because remember, that was the rule for joint ops. Every person has a joint obligation and joint rights over assets and liabilities. Okay, so that's what a proportionate consolidation looks like. That's why you'll see that that piece of loan was, is left there. Yeah, so we're going to have loan to Sanger sitting in our books. All right, then we had a piece of interest. Did you remember to do the piece of interest? Um, they said that there was interest, so I'm going to assume the interest had been booked. They didn't say it hadn't been booked, right? So I'm going to assume the interest had been booked. So they say the loan carries interest at 8%. So all I did, I just took the 22 and times by 8. But you could go back and say 55 times 8 times 40% because I only want to eliminate my piece. So it works out to 1.76. 1.76 are finance costs. That must be reversed. So I've got a credit. And 1.76 of income, that's got to be reversed. So I've got to debit that. When I go and have a look, I think the 1.76 is sitting there as finance costs. If I'm not mistaken, I remember seeing a 1.76. Let's go and have a look. So if I go back, although you, sometimes you may not see that because it might be hidden with other numbers. So the other income, for example, that was right at the bottom here, other income in the parent includes that bit of interest, isn't it? But it would include all of it, not just the 40%. But it's all hidden with other stuff. But yes, up here somewhere, there is the finance costs. Because obviously, um, Sangu isn't paying anybody else interest. They only paid the parent interest. But now that piece that we were going to bring in as an expense is to me. So I eliminate it. It disappears. Okay. Um, then I have the intercompany for the... Um, is it on the next page? Oh, I'm too far. I have the intercompany at the end for the for the sales. For the sales. So remember our very first journal is always sales cost of sales. So I continue with that sales cost of sales because otherwise I'm double counting sales. Hey, I've sold to the joint op, they've sold to someone else. It's one sale from the group's perspective, but it would be shown as two sales amounts and, and I would be adding them together. But I only eliminate my piece. 40%. The other piece I consider to be a sale to the other guys. So it's a real sale. 
I eliminate my piece. Then they said to you 75% had been sold, 25 hadn't, 167,500. The profit piece is 20% on cost, so 20 over 120. If it was 20 on sales, it would be 20 over 100. 20 over 120, 27,917, 40% of that, 11,167. And then tax, we mustn't forget tax, 3,127. You might be asking me why we didn't do tax on any of the other entries, because they're in and out. Yeah, All the other entries, do you agree, are in and out. Interest in, interest out. Management fee in, management fee out. So all the other entries are in and out, so tax would be in and out, so we don't do a tax entry. This one and PPE are the only two that have unearned profit pieces that implicate profit, that change profit. So those ones will have tax journals. So this one will have, would have had a tax journal for the 3127. Debit cost of sales credit inventory to make inventory smaller. We can't see that inventory because it's, it's anyway AB's inventory, isn't it? Is AB selling? I don't even know. So AB's got, I mean, but with inventory, unless it's the only person you're buying inventory from, you won't see it, right? So it's sitting in there somewhere. We're going to adjust it. And then there's the tax deferred tax journal. So far, so good. So that's a, jo that's a joint operation. A joint operation is a proportionate consolidation. So I consolidate, but I only consolidate my share. So any adjustments that I make, Elimination entries into company transactions is just my share. Um, and then I may, uh, there's no NCI, yeah, which is the best bonus of proportionate consolidations because NCI is always our bugbear. The one thing I didn't pick up is if there were dividends. Are there any dividends in that TV? Because, you know, dividends is the one we always – there are? Okay. Because dividends are the ones we always miss. Do you agree? Because it isn't in the additional information. It's in that trial balance. We skim through that trial balance when we start and we move on to the information and then we sometimes miss. Um, I'm going the wrong way. So there are some dividends. So we would need to eliminate. Did we do it? Did we do it last week? We did do it last week for 10 do, hey? Because we did um, put in that dividend when we did the proof. But we didn't do the journal to eliminate it, did we? Okay, I think as we said when we do the subsidiary, we must make sure we eliminate it, isn't it? Okay. So, here are the dividends paid by the two companies. We need to do a dividends elimination journal. There's no NCIs. Nice, right? What was the percentage for Tendu? 30? Yeah. Okay, so that's your dividends that you have to eliminate. City of 8, which is 24. Is that right? 24. And 4 twos are 8. And 8. 24 and 8 we will eliminate. We will eliminate it out of this other income number over here. Agreed? So that would also be a, a further elimination entry that you would need to do. But it's just a simple 8-8, eight, eight, debit, dividends, paid, credit, debit, dividends, received, credit, or debit, other income, rather, credit, dividends, paid. And then for the associate, the entry goes to investment in associate, isn't it, which we saw last week. But we don't have to worry about that now. But we must just remember when we do that PL to go and eliminate the 24 and the 8. Okay. All right, we're ready to go do the PL then. Because we haven't started this PL at all, am I correct? Okay. When did we buy the subsidiary? Was it also this year? Yeah, it was. Did we have a bargain there? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so when we do the PL, what, what you've actually been asked to do is a PL, right? Um, let me just go to the end. What I have is I have a group structure that looks like this: parent, sub, JV, joint op. Do you agree? Parent, sub, JV, joint op. 
They've asked me to do a PL and OCI as a starter, right? We'll get to statement of changes in equity then. So for PL and OCI, what we're going to do is we're going to do a line by line. Uh, I think we have to guide ourselves from the trial balance, but they have a line for revenue in the trial balance? Or do they start with GP? Revenue. Okay, so we'll have revenue, cost of sales, GP, other income, other expenses, profit or interest and tax, interest or finance charges, profit before tax, tax, profit. OCI, which is one after tax number, and then we will have total profit and OCI. Yeah. Then right at the bottom, we're going to take this total and we're going to say parent NCI. Agreed? When we consolidate this kind of group, we're going to put in our brackets, and it was partial hey, during the year. Was it months that apportioned the profit? Or did they give us a, a PL just for a piece of a year? That PL they've given us for the subsidiary, is it for the full year, or is it it's a trial balance for the full year? But we only acquired it in on the 1st of September, and we had to apportion, right? September, October, November, December. Right, so when we look at our numbers, our numbers are going to be essentially parent plus sub for four months. Do you agree? September, October, November, December. Plus percentage joint up. Agree? And that's going to be for all of them. Then somewhere here, uh, here, we have to put in a line, which I forgot to put in, share of profit of joint venture, which we did work out last week. Yeah? Then, once you've put that all in, parent, plus the four months of the sub, plus the 40% of the joint top, and you can put it in exactly like that if you like, isn't it? Now, we've gone and done the 40% because we did the TB, but in practice, you would not. You would actually open a bracket, and in your bracket, you would say revenue is this for the parent, plus this for the sub times four months, if it's apportioned evenly, plus 40% of this, which is the joint top. And then, when they mark it, they would go and mark like that, the pieces, okay? So you're going to do that for every line. You're going to put in your share of profits in the joint venture, which we did from last week. Then once you've put that all in, then we're going to go back to our entire journals and put in extra numbers. So the extra numbers that I'm looking at adjusting are, in other income, I'm expecting to add a bargain. Do you agree? I'm expecting to subtract interest and accounting fees. Um, and dividends times two or maybe three I don't know did the subsidiary also pay a dividend yeah. three yeah divs, three three divs that I want to eliminate there do you agree okay so when I'm just looking at the numbers then there's some intercompany inventory so the inventory adjustment will adjust there and we'll adjust there, isn't it? I don't know what was there was last week. It was PPE. Which way did it? Was land. The other intercompany transaction was land. Was it in this year? Or old years? It's this year. So that sale of land is also sitting in other income. Is it? Who's, who, who made the profit on the land? Ten do. So it's not sitting there, it's sitting here. Profit land. Okay. Um, so we've got inventory adjustments going up there. Down here we have inventory adjustments and profit on land adjustments. I'm not sure if it's profit that I'm reversing, then deferred tax will reverse. It should be a minus and a minus, right? Because up here when I say minus, I'm actually plusing. Do you agree? There's a plus and there's a minus. There's the minus for the sales piece and there's a plus for the inventory piece. So I'm going to just say plus minus. Uh, I have accounting fees coming out of here, isn't it, as well? 
accounting fees coming out there. And I have interest coming out here, minus interest paid. Anything else that you can remember from the, what, the work we've done last week or the week before? That was more or less it. If we go and look at all the intercompany transactions, just quickly to scan them. Acquisition, acquisition, acquisition. The TB. The mark to market, this current mark to market movement is what's going to go into OCI. Do you agree? I don't think there's anything else in OCI because I didn't see any other mark to markets. Did anybody else have mark to markets? Did 10 do have one? No, because none of the others owned any investments. All the investments were horizontal, weren't they? There was no vertical stuff because vertical is ugly. Remember, we have to do pieces of pieces. Okay. All right. So over here, we had all these acquisitions. That was fine. The mark to market, that's what's going to land up in OCI. Then. That one we've dealt with. That one we've dealt with today. today. Okay, it was just the profits on the land, which was included in other income, which goes to share of profit in associate, isn't it? Um, and I actually made a mistake with that land, but I'll come and have it. I'll fix it now. And then there's nothing else here. Now over here, we are said the profit on land adjusts here. It doesn't adjust there. It adjusts there. Because they're the ones that have the profit, isn't it? Not not there, isn't it? Because that's an after-tax number. Do you agree? If they have the profit, then the, of the, any P&L entries would go there. It wouldn't go to the lines. Okay. Um, but you remember that because we did those journals last week. Minus profit plus tax. OCI is going to be parent only. Yeah. And then uh, NCI share of profit. Percentage share of profit. It should be fairly straightforward. There were no intercompanies. Do you agree there were no intercompanies? No intercompanies. Okay. We're going to try to do the PL so long? Okay. All right. So remember that a PL, how many marks is this PL? 36. So PL like this, which is worth 36 marks. We've done a bit of work. We did a bit of work last week on the joint venture. Hey, we actually did a bit more because I wanted us to practice uh, equity accounting. But uh, 36 marks, a lot of your marks you can earn by just doing that first blue bit. You can pass it with just almost that first blue bit, isn't it? Parent plus the portion of the sub because it's partial consolidation for the year plus your share of the joint op. If you open your brackets and you start those numbers, Okay, I'm going to let you do that. Then I want to make, I want to compare, so I want to see at the end what numbers we've got. I'm going to, I think, work in Excel. Yeah, because I think I had a bad, we had a bad experience. It wasn't your module. With 2602, where there was a whole like written assignment, and then we had been working on it like over three weeks. When I went back to try and look at, see my numbers, I couldn't understand what they were because I couldn't see if they were twos or sixes or eights or so I am going to move out of here if that's okay with you I'm going to start working in Excel it also makes it easier to add up isn't it then we can all make sure we add up the same If you pick up anything that I left off when I was giving you my story, I'm oh, sorry, do you want to see that story? Do you want me to see? Okay. I'm going to work like this so that you can see what I had put. Should be fine. Oh, look, there is also um, there's also an OCI in the sub. <sighs> no, it's on a date. Do you see it says on a date? Yeah. The fair value, I think you would. There's, there's two, there's two there. There's a fair value adjustment as well. I think the fair value. Oh no, the, no, there isn't two. It's the same. 
the same one. Why do they say fair value adjustment on equipment when it's a reval of equipment? Hey, well, they use the right. Makes you think one is a fair value like on an investment or something, and then the other one is a reval on an equipment. There were no intercompany transactions with this this company, were they? What the heck? Hmm? Mm. I did, didn't I? CGT. The dividend affects the balance in the balance sheet, not the profit, the investment. Yeah. Because remember, the journal entry to reverse that is to dividend to debit the to remove the dividend received. Mm -hmm. But the dividend paid is not anywhere in the numbers, so the dividend paid, the other side goes to the investment, makes the investment smaller. I've got that uh, book open, actually. Let me show you quickly. Okay, so if you remember, let me go full screen. This is what we did last week with that um, number, isn't it? So our profit number was 416360, which was 40% of the profit. But then there was profit on the sale of the land, and so we, we would have removed 30% of that to make profit smaller, and then there was CGT, which was 395. When we look at the movement in the investment, the movement in the investment is the profit for the year, but without the land adjustment, because the other side of the land adjustment is land. Isn't it? It's not investment. It's a, a decrease in land and a decrease in profit, but it doesn't affect the investment because it's not the associate's land. So you'll see here that land and that CGT are not affected because that will affect the parent's land and CGT. And then here's where the dividend pops out. That mark to market is a since movement, hey? it's not a current year. Yeah. We're going to need it when we do statement of changes in equity. We already started last week, didn't we, with that statement of changes in equity? We just did we just did the pieces that were the pieces that were related to this but I don't I don't know why I don't have it. Anyway. Maybe it's on one of the other pages. Please just check the numbers because, you know, with formulas, sometimes like I leave, you leave a bracket somewhere and then it goes awry. So please don't just assume my numbers are correct. Ah, they are cents. What do they say? Rand, nearest rand. What's making it difficult is the fact is how we did it, hey, how we worked through it, because we worked through the subsidiary a couple of weeks ago, then the joint venture last week, now this week the joint op. Um, but I think if we were doing it all at once, what you do is your first step is to take that trial balance and stick those first blue numbers in. And then as you do the pieces, you'll go and put in the pieces that belong, isn't it? So it's easier to be sure that you're not leaving anything out. But I think... 
I don't know. You guys must double check it. I think that's it. The joint venture didn't have a share of OCI, hey? No, they didn't. There was no move. See, they had, we'd even done the journal for the for the dividend as well. So it's an, a debit to dividends received, which we, we've got as other income, but the credit side goes to investment. It's so easy to think that the anything that affects investment affects share of profit and vice versa, but with the intercompanies, the, there's never, never an intercompany where it goes to one and to the other. So just remember, remember that. It's just the profit for the year that would go. So let me just make this bigger now. It's the bargain. Oh, yes. Didn't I say that was the one, the first number that to adjust there? I think. It was the very first number I put here. It was bargain. Now you couldn't remember what it was. Yeah, sorry. Look, my. Um, what you need to do when you do yours is you need to put references next to all your numbers, isn't it, to your workings. Or you need to uh, make, uh, put in a bracket what it is so that somebody can find it somewhere. Hey? But a reference to a calc is the best. You probably will have calcs for most of them, right? I mean, the 9.6 needs a calc, the one, even if it's just a small, like, little one with a little one that says how you got to the 9.6 because it's 2 times 12 times 40%. If you have to put a bracket 2 times 12 times 40% and whatever times 8% times 40%, it's just going to make this huge, isn't it? So it's better to try and keep it as tidy as you can. I think at best what's allowed on here is the percentages and the months, right? Any further calcs you would really need to do. It can be just a simple little like one, something like that, a little one. And then a little one over here with the a little calc. Yeah, it can be as simple as that. You've seen that. So as simple as possible, but um, clear what your numbers are and where they come from. Because if it's right, they will mark it. But if it's wrong, then they won't know what it is. If it's worth a couple of marks. Yeah. Like if you, if you put the wrong number there, and they'd already marked it somewhere else, and all they were doing was f pulling it through, then if they didn't know what it was, they wouldn't go and look and see, oh, okay, it's the bargain, and she got it wrong, but it's the right thing to add it, so you wouldn't get that benefit. Yeah. Otherwise, your numbers look like mine. Okay. The NCI here is pretty simple to do because the NCI here is just um, whatever those numbers were for the subsidiary, and it's wrong. I didn't add, I didn't do the four months. Did I four months it? No. <laughs> okay, let me delete this page. I have to four months it. Mm. Times four over 12. That one I must four months, but the one underneath it I don't have to four months. So it's only 22, and then down here, I also have to four months it. See, we almost made a mistake, huh? Better. Okay. So that's the first piece. Everybody good with that? Yolanda? Fine? Tyler? All right. So over here, all I did was... up. I four months the profit and gave them 20% and then at the bottom I didn't four months the fair value adjustment because it happened at the end of the year. Okay. Uh, then they ask for a statement of changes in equity. What do they ask for? This? Do they ask for specific columns or they, do they just say? Just a, just a statement. Okay. Why doesn't it want to work now? Oh, it's because it's sleeping or something. I 
that I need that page. It was last week's page. All right. Statement of changes in equity. They say a full statement. Okay. So if we look at what we currently have, and they say no comparatives or they say comparatives? No comparatives. Okay, so if we look at what we've got in the trial balance, we have share capital, retained earnings, mark to market, uh, NCI. Do you agree? Sometimes what they do is they put a little total in here, and then there's another total here. So this is basically total for owners, NCI, total, total. But you can go and have a look at the totals. I'm not going to worry about the totals or the exact format. I'm going to leave that up to you. You can go and have a look. All right. So we worried about these columns, these four columns. Um, that's it, huh? All right. So if we look at what will be in them, and what we're looking at is movements from beginning of year, movement, end of year, essentially, dividend. Uh, well, now let's put what the movements are. Beginning of year, end of year. The movements that we will have are PL, OCI, dividends, and we're going to have acquisition of subsidiary because there wasn't one before. Do you agree? Probably you should put the acquisition of subsidiary first. I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. When we look at share capital, it's parent, there should be no movements, and we land with parent. Do you agree? For share capital. For retained earnings, it's going to be beginning of year. It's just going to be parent plus the percentage for the, uh, for the, not for the associate, for the JV, which we worked out last week. Why? The sub and the joint op were both acquired in the current year, isn't it? Uh, let me put a little star there. Sub and joint op acquired current year. Acquisition happened in current year. So we're not going to um, worry about that for retained earnings at beginning because it was acquired in the current year. Otherwise, the numbers would be there. Do you agree? And it's when we do joint venture... It's only the percentage of the joint venture. In fact, we, when we do statement of changes in equity, it's always percentage. Do you agree? Mark to market is the same. Percentage of joint venture movement since EC. Let's say that. Do you agree? Parent plus percentage of JV movement since EC. Mark to market, parent plus percentage JV uh, movement since EC. We did those two calcs last time. We scribbled them onto a, a piece of paper. NCI beginning is nothing. Yeah. Then share of profit or loss for the year. These numbers here will come off the PL that we just did. There should be a number coming in that column, a number in that column, and a number in that column. Hmm? No, the one for profit is the one that goes under retained earnings. The one for OCI, um, the one for profit is the one that goes under retained earnings. The difference is the bit that goes under OCI. And then the total will go there. Do you, do you agree? Okay. Um, I think it's done like that. And it's not done in pieces. Unless it's like P&L and OCI, two different lines, but I, I'm not sure. I wasn't able to find one which had a, a sh where the NCI had a share as well, but it looks a bit like that. Okay, this is just PNL. This is OCI. This is both. Yeah. Okay, and then dividends is going to be parent only because we've eliminated everything else, isn't it? Except in the NCI column. In the NCI column, we're going to have sub percentage dividend in there as a minus. And it's also minus over here. Agreed? None of the joint ops or joint venture dividends will feature here because we've eliminated the bit that's to do with us and we've got nobody else. And then we have the acquisition of the subsidiary 
acquisition NCI from your on ACK, and then you'll have end values. Does that make sense? All right, now last week we had done these numbers that one, and then the same one there, and the week before we had done this one, isn't it? Today we've done the rest, we've done the PLs, and we've done the dividends. Do you agree? Okay, let's see how it goes. I'm not going to do this one in Excel. I don't think I need to because we're just going to be pulling numbers, right? I'm going to give you guys a chance to do it and then we're going to do it together on the board just to check the numbers. Okay, so they do a box for that one. They do a box. They do... Uh, uh, this looks like this. Total. Total. And then there's a box that says PNL OCR with the two numbers split. Okay. Right. But when we so when we do when we do it now, once you've had a chance to do it, we'll do it with the box. Our time is up. Ah, all right. Time flies when you're having fun. So you guys are going to go do that, and we'll check it next week. All right. How do you feel so far about all of these things, associates, groups, joint ops, joint ventures? You feeling comfortable? You want to do a lecture, a revision? where we just do one big mixed group and look at everything. Otherwise, next week we're moving into changes in ownership. Changes in ownership is when we have an associate that becomes a subsidiary, so we equity account for a piece of the year, we consolidate for a piece of the year. You have to like keep your wits about you, what, how you do the one and how you do the other, in addition to what actually happens when you do the acquisition entry. So how do you feel? We move on. Move forward. You're not sure. You would vote for a revision week. You would also. Okay, that's fine. We'll do a revision week. So what we'll do is we'll pick up a past question and we'll look for a, a mixed one. With In your exam, there will probably be two questions. Usually it's two. Sometimes it's three. They put cash flow into a separate question. But one of the questions won't have changes in ownership. So it's everything we've studied up to now. It'll be a mixed kind of group like we see this one with a sub and a joint and an associate. Or, but more, it could be a vertical, it could be a horizontal, but with no changes in ownership. And then the second one will be one with the changes in ownership. So we'll look for one of those and we'll, we'll have a practice week just to, and I'll try and find one that has a bit of everything so that we can just refresh how everything works. Yeah, because then when we start to do changes and we start to, to look, I just go, you know that for that, piece of the year to this, so we do this, 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 and then it's, if you don't have all the pieces together, then you start to get confused. Right, so finish that for next week. It should be fairly straightforward. We've done all the numbers. It's just plugging, eh? So it's just plugging numbers, um, but we'll double check with each other next week what it looks like. Okay.